Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hi, my friends. This is Dr. Brian Adams. Welcome to Faith Is Now. Here we are in Greater Works Studio wanting to speak to you today. Again, you're going to say, man, I've watched some of your programs. You talk a lot about faith. Well, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Him being the Father, the Creator of the world, the Father God of the Lord Jesus Christ, and hopefully your Father. Hey, I want to talk to you about your faith and what's responsible. Now, many times people are like, well, I guess I don't have enough faith, or maybe someone will brag on their faith. Jesus never said anything about having faith in the preacher, having faith in yourself, and he didn't say nothing about having faith in your faith. He said have faith in God, but faith is given to you, to every man, to every woman, is given the measure of faith. So now I believe that whatever we receive from God is holy. Now, not only is what we receive from God, but uh, is, is a holy, but what we receive from God, we're called to be a steward of. That means we have to take care of it, present it, protect it, and do what it needs to feed it. Let's, let's talk. Let's go to the Bibles. Turn your Bibles, if you have them with you, to the book of Jude, verse 20. Now, Jude only has one chapter, and it's the book that's right before Revelation. So, as I jokingly say, go all the way to Revelations, then turn left quickly. Right there, just before Revelation, in verse 20, it reads, But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. See there? It comes from God. It's holy. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So we see building up yourself on your most holy faith. That faith can be built. It's given to you as a measure, but it can be built up and it can be encouraged and strengthened you as you pray in the Spirit. That means praying in other tongues that the Holy Spirit gives you the power and the utterance to do. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. I'm going to reread that because I want you to really pay attention here. For unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them, them that's being mentioned in the Bible in the, uh, when they were in the wilderness. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Because see, you can quote the word, speak the word, preach the word, but if it's not mixed with faith, it's not going to profit you. Isn't that something? You've got to mix the word with faith. Faith comes by hearing. So when it is preached under the power of the anointing under the Spirit, without it being preached under the presence of God and His anointing, my friend, you're not going to receive faith. You're going to receive religion. You're going to be religious. So many people will spend so much time quoting the word, speaking the word, making rules and regulations, but never having a relationship with the author of the word. So many people, I'm going to make a statement, I'm going to do it bold because I've seen it in almost 40 years of being in uh, a believer, being in the church, almost 30 plus some years of uh, being in the ministry, is people will worship the word of God, but they don't know the God of the word. Now we should honor his word because it's spoken by him, but if you honor the word but don't honor him, what good is that? That's almost ridiculous. You can't separate his word from him, but don't worship his word. Worship the God of the word and then honor his word, which is his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. His commandments is his word. His word isn't to be loved. His word is to be obeyed. He is to be loved. Now, you know, I know the scripture is talking about love the, the, the word also too, but I'm trying to make a a point that there is God, the Father, that we must love Him, come to Him as His sons, because to as many as believe in the name of His Son, He's given us power to become sons. We've got to be those people that say, I'm coming to you, Abba Father. I love you. Your words are your commandments. I'm going to obey them. What He's saying is, because for the natural mind of man, it can't understand the things of God. So now, in order to obey that which you can't understand, that makes it a little bit hard. That's why we see so many people that are hearers and not doers. Because so many people are like, well, not until I understand it. Well, speaking of understanding, there's another scripture that says this, lean not into your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. 
If it's God's word, if it's God's spirit instructing you and telling you to do something, just obey it. Just trust him. You know, he, he knows what you need. He knows the direction and the purpose and the path that he has for you. There's a way, the Bible says, that seems right unto man, but the end therein is death. So the end is death when you take your way, your wills, and your desire. Now with God, he said, let's get the death out of the way right at the beginning. Take up your cross, die to self, and allow the Spirit of God begin to transform you. When you become born again, you are translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's Son. But now, once you get past this, this has happened, the translation has already taken uh, part. What you need to do now is you need to be able to uh, tap into what the scripture says, transformation. That means beginning to the word, renewing and washing of the water of the word, letting yourself be changed. Because again, the natural mind of man does not understand the things of God. So we've got to have the Holy Spirit grant us revelation, and that's only going to come through reading the Word, but not just reading the Word. Knowledge puffeth up. We just don't want to get pride. Here's what happens. You've got to read the Word by being in the presence of God, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. It's going to take all that together. When you sit down with the Word, the Holy Spirit's the author, say, come Holy Spirit, I welcome you. After a time of worship and a time of praise, putting on the appropriate music, maybe with no words or some words, after you actually feel the presence of God coming because you've worshipped Him, you've honored Him, He comes where He's celebrated and worshipped, not where He's tolerated. And once He comes and begins to get in the Word, have communion and fellowship. Now I'm not talking about drinking the wine and eating the part, that type of communion. I'm talking about fellowship and spending time with Him. Now as you do that, what we want to do is, is we want to then say, okay, I'm reading this word. What does this mean? Could you explain this to me, Holy Spirit? As you begin to have fellowship with him, there's no greater place. You know, I always tell people, you want to build relationship with people than eat with people. Come partake of the bread of the word of God. Sit down. It's like a picnic with the Holy Spirit. The word of God is, is, is the word. And break bread with him. Come and say, teach me. Bring me. In Luke 24, 45, the scripture says about Jesus, and he opened their understanding to understand the scriptures. Man, I don't know about you, but that's what I'm praying, that the Lord, as I read his holy word, will bring understanding. As that understanding, uh, one of God's old generals named F.F. F. Bosworth said, faith begins where the will of God is made known. Now we know we're given a measure of faith, and faith comes by healing, but now Faith really comes strong. I believe a rhema type fed faith comes strong when his will is made known. Now there's all kinds of will all through the word of God, but you've got a divine purpose. You've got a direct path that God has for you. It says as he begins to make that known, now you got a faith. You got that faith. Don't let people speak doubt to you. Don't uh, think negative about it. Uh, don't allow people to to. You know, I don't allow myself to be around people that cuss and the people that carry on, people that tell dirty jokes. I don't listen to this stuff. I don't watch stuff on TV and stuff that's inappropriate because I got to protect my spirit, but I also got to protect the faith that God has given me. For unto us the gospel was preached as well unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So we need to mix the faith because life always presents to us impossibilities. But God is the overcomer of impossibilities. Impossibilities must bow their knee to the God of possibility. Is that right? It might be impossible with man, the scripture says, but with God, all things are possible. Praise God, praise God, that all things are possible. Now, that with God, he told me one time, quit working for me, Brian, and work with me. And when I begin to work with him, I begin to get in the yoke, to be yoked. He said, come, all you that are tired and heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. My burden is light and my yoke is easy. When you work for him, it's like you're carrying that yoke all by yourself. And you're trying to do this as a, a, maybe a son that's trying to gain acceptance. You're trying to perform 
so that you'll please him. But don't you know he's already accepted you because he chose you. You did not chose him. You simply answered the call. So during the possible, let's talk about Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My. I, I just think repetition is the mother of learning, so I'm going to read that again. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. I remember when I first read that, I started getting excited. Oh my gosh. All I got to do is seek him. I don't even got to find him and I get rewarded. But the diligent part, everything about the kingdom, everything about the scripture, everything about doing with God, I believe really has got a lot to do with the intent of the heart. Are you doing it for selfish gain? Are you doing it just to look religious? Are you doing it for this purpose or that purpose? Or do you truly want to know him? Do you truly want to change? Do you understand? I was a fallen person person born short of the glory of God and now I've got an opportunity to walk in royalty and righteousness been redeemed by the blood of the lamb man I'm one of the sons of God I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus man I'm about to shout already to get excited so without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is but then there's a whole other question a whole other sermon right there who do you believe, my friend, that he is? Who is God to you? Do you only know him as the sin excuser? Or do you know him as the healer? Do you know him as a prophet? Or do you only know him as a teacher? How do you know him? You must come to him believing that he is. I want to come to him as the great I am. He's not the, he's not the great I was, my friend. He's the great I am. I want to come to him being the I am. So he can say, I am everything that you need. There's no impossibilities for me. That's what I believe the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you today on this program, that to guard your faith, use your faith. He's given you the faith to be a vehicle to reach out and touch him. As you reach out by faith with the hand of faith, God reaches out with his hand with the hand of grace. That's right. The hand of grace from God reaching down to touch the hand of faith of man. Because we come to him believing he wants us redeemed. He wants us forgiven. He wants us healed. He wants us delivered. Do you believe that? He said, beloved, I wish above all things thou mayest prosper. He doesn't want you poor and broke and can't afford to feed your kids and you. He, he says, I want above all things for you to prosper. The number two, to be in health. So he doesn't want you sick. That's right. He wants you in divine health. He is the Lord God that healeth thee. He rose with healing in his wings. By his stripes you're healed. Now all those scriptures can be quoted religiously. They'll do you no good at all. It must be done in the presence and under the power of the Holy Spirit. Word unbreathed on by the Spirit is just written ink on parchment. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Are you eating, reading, receiving Words that are breathed on by the Holy Spirit. That's rhema words that becomes alive. Just because it's written doesn't mean it's for you. You could say, well, it's in the Bible. Well, Jesus walked on the waters in the Bible. But if you just take that scripture and try to walk on the water, you're going to get wet, I guarantee you. It's got to be a word that the Holy Spirit says, this is your prescription. This is your word for you today. So knowing who he is. Only the revelation you have of God is all you can receive from him. So begin to seek him, come after him diligently, like the scripture just before said. And as you seek him, cry out. Moses said, I want to know your ways. The children of Israel knew his works. They saw the miracles and the signs. But Moses knew his ways, his attributes, his personalities, what he was and what he presented. The covenants that he made with mankind, starting from when the exodus coming out of Egypt, uh, even clear back to the covenants he made with Adam. As we know, the Adamic covenant, the Mosaic uh, covenant, the, the Noah uh, covenant with Noah, and it goes on and on. Now we've got a covenant through Jesus Christ, a new covenant. The old was a covenant that was not sufficient, so a new one came. Praise God. I got faith in the risen Son of God, the only Messiah, that is Jesus Christ. 
Now that faith, I can't allow someone to come along and begin to talk to me and say, did he really raise from the dead? No, I don't think he did. There's other ways to get saved. See, if you come, have people coming bringing lies, sowing seeds of doubt and unbelief, your faith becomes diluted and polluted. You don't want to do that, my friends. Protect your faith. Keep it. Feed it. Faith needs to be fed by the Word of God. But the fuel of faith now is love. Faith worketh by love. So if you've got bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness in your heart, you are going to have a problem, my friend. Truly going to have a problem. Because without fuel, your faith doesn't work. Your words fall to the ground. Now you're even going to get mad at God saying, I'm praying, I'm doing everything I know to do, but it doesn't seem that this works. There's a realm of the spirit. There's a realm of the flesh. Many people quote the word, speak the word, read the word. They pray out of the flesh. What's done out of the flesh will profit you nothing. God is a spirit. You must seek him in the spirit. The Bible doesn't say visit the spirit occasionally, but it says live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. That's going to take some discipline. That's going to take first crucifying the flesh. If you crucify it daily, take up your cross, then that flesh won't be stronger than the spirit and you'll be able to reside in the spirit. But ladies and gentlemen, this all takes faith to do. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Man, I, I, I just know you're probably just sitting back on that. You just sat back on that couch. You just leaned back in that chair and say, you know what, Brian? I've got some impossibilities, things that are impossible for me. Those just started going through. Maybe you might have a list that you've actually wrote down on the table next to you. And you're just saying, man, I got a whole list of these things that's impossible. Take them to God, lay them and say, is this impossible because it's not for me? I'm looking at the wrong direction. I'm trying to do the wrong thing is I'm trying to fulfill this upon the lust of my flesh? Or is this something that, God, you want me to do, but I'm trying to do it apart from you. I'm trying to do it without you. You know, just like the scripture says in Mark 16, they went preaching the gospel everywhere, the Lord working with them. See, they didn't say, they went preaching the gospel everywhere, they were working for God, but it said the Lord working with them. Therefore, by the Lord working with them, the impossible became possible. That's a, that's a word for somebody right there. If you'll work with him in your finances, if you'll work with them in your medical and your physical conditions, if you work with them in your marriage, humble yourself. You don't always got to be right. And sometimes even if you're right, you don't have to say it. Oh, well, I think I just preached to myself there. I'll have to go home and practice that one, won't I? <laughs> but anyway... You make that list of things that you you feel God wants you to do, but they still appear and are impossible. And say, Lord, I'm standing on this scripture, Luke 18, 27. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Doing it with God. Now, this is going to talk about how the instructions, the administration. Though You're going to need a word of wisdom. How do you actually want me to do it? Now... One of the things I've seen so much with God is there's a timing. When does God, how does God want it done? What time uh, is it going to be done through somebody else? So many times we're like, well, if it's going to be done right, daggone it, I'm going to do it myself. But God doesn't want a one-man show. He wants the body of Christ working together. So let's partner with God to do the impossible. Breaking drug addiction, getting our education, working at our finances, getting, getting those past bills. You know, if you're a believer and you owe past bills a, a bit, uh, and debts, you need to go make those things right. Remember Zacchaeus, when he really had an encounter with Jesus, he said, if I've done anybody wrong, I'll go back and make, uh, make it right four times. Now, I'm not telling you you have to, to go pay four times, but you should make wrongs right. That's really what's called fruit of repentance. If you owe somebody money and you just said, I'm not going to pay them back, go make it right, no matter what they've done. Let your name be spoken of. There's nothing better than good character. As a former military person, I would always say, to be on time is late. And I see people, they really don't care at all if they're late. They'll show up late and they always got an excuse. Oh, I had to fix my hair. The ladies, I got to put on my makeup. There's always something. I had to do this, that. No. Set your time, plan ahead, plan for time driving, 
Be on time. Be the best employee at your work. Be early for work. Be one of the last persons that leave. Have the cleanest work spots. It takes faith to do a better job in the kingdom first. It takes faith to do a better job at your workplace. It takes faith to be have a good word. Do your kids speak good about you? Does your wife speak good about you? See, you got to protect your faith. They say, you're saying I'm a man of God, I'm a woman of God. But then what are people saying? If you're proclaiming I'm a child of the king, is he your Lord? Is he your savior? Is he your master? Is he all those things? Because if he's only your savior, that means you're only submitted to him for giving your sins. You want that free ride to heaven. But my friends, you need to be transformed to the image of Christ so that you can have and become the visible image of the invisible God. I'll know you got faith when I see your works. Your works that you repent, you stop sinning, you get those finances taken care of, it, doing it God's way. You begin to walk in divine health. You get the miracles that you need. I mean, it's all about it. Jobs, finances, education, uh, getting drug addictions breaking off of you. And then once you get free, once you get set free, you can begin to use your faith, not in yourself, not in your faith, but your faith in God, you can begin to see the breakthroughs. Luke 7, 50, after a woman had uh, approached Jesus, got healed, Jesus said to her, and he said to her, thy faith has saved thee. Then he said, go in faith, excuse me, go in peace. So their faith has saved thee. Well, how could that happen? She had faith in him, the son of God. She had faith in him that whether the woman that said, I'll touch his hem of his garment, or she came to him for prayer, whatever it is, she had faith in him. So he said, your faith has saved thee, go in peace. Peace is one third of the kingdom. So in other words, what he's saying is, that which has helped you, that which has saved you, now you've got to take kingdom peace and keep an atmosphere of no doubt, no anxiety, no fear, no worry, and you've got to keep that atmosphere in order to keep what you receive from heaven. Luke 18, 39 through 43. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. And he cried out so much more. We're talking about the blind man alongside the road. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately, oh, I love those immediately's in the Bible. I need some immediately's. I'll bet you there's some people watching. You need some immediately's. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw this, gave praise to God. See, that's what you and I are supposed to do. When we do the miracles, when the people get saved, when the people get their breakthroughs, they should be glorifying God. Not glorifying you but say, oh, that God would give such power to mankind. And if God will use them, then there's a great possibility God will use you. But if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. If you love him, you'll take that faith to be a good steward of it, feed it, uh, protect it, and then use it toward God to help break the impossibilities in people's life. Do you feel like there's some impossibilities in your life? I, I, want, to, uh, I want to pray a prayer with you right now. Because you might feel some possibility that you can be saved or that you can even get close to God. Pray this prayer with me right now, would you? I want you to become born again because that's what the scripture says. You must become born again. Pray this prayer. Say, Father, I make a conscious decision to forgive every person that's ever hurt me and done me wrong. I even forgive myself. I release the past and I let it go. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, and I believe He died for my sins. I believe He then raised from the dead. Jesus, be my Savior. I know you're the only way. Forgive me of all my sins. See, if you prayed that prayer and you prayed it in faith, I believe you just became born again. Now, I tell you what, if you became born again, what I want you to know is you need to get in a Bible-believing church immediately. You need to follow it up with water baptism. And then you need to allow yourself to be taught, trained, to be discipled, to become obedient, and learn all those things 
that God wants us to learn. What he taught the disciples, he said, you guys teach everybody else. We learn that from the Word of God. Now, he also brings healing. You got pain, sickness, disease, deaf ear, blind eye, tumor, growth, pain, whatever. Arm that doesn't work, put your uh, good hand or have someone lay hand or just believe with me right now. And, and after I pray for you, I want you to do what you couldn't do before. I curse every spirit of sickness and disease. Blind spirits, deaf spirits, mute spirits come out of people right now. I command this in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave and don't come back. Every spirit of disease, cancer, lung, blood, cancer, go out in the name of Jesus. Liver cancer, leave in the name of every type of cancer and disease, uh, MS, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, nervous system disease, leave these people now in the name of Jesus. People suffering ep epilepsy, I bind and break your power. Devil, get off that spinal column, get off the base of that brain right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid you to return in the name of Jesus. Every tumor, growth, goiter, hernia, dissolve. I curse you like Christ cursed the fig tree right now. Blood vessels feeding those tumors and growth, stop it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bind and break your power in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Father God, we give you the glory and the praise. And now I want you to begin to do what you couldn't do before. Lift that arm up. Get out of that wheelchair. That's right, get up and walk. Get out of that sick bed. Check for that growth. Check your eyes, check your ears. Then you're gonna see on the screen, there's a, a number that you can SMS me, you text me on the WhatsApp there. There's an email address. Send me an email letting me know. If you accepted Jesus Christ, I want to rejoice with you. If you received a healing, please, please, please give us the testimony. We want to know. Contact us. Let us know what country, what place in America, wherever you're watching this out. We want to know where you're watching. Let us know if these programs are touching you and making a difference in your life. Come on, keep trying. Don't stop. Start focusing with that eye, listening with that ear. Get up, move that arm, stretch forth, walk around. You're doing it slowly. That's right. The more you do it, the farther you go, the better it's going to be. I release healing in Jesus. I release peace. I command every tormented mind by demons, night terrors, your power's broken. It must stop right now in Jesus' mighty name. I command this under the authority of the name of Jesus and the power of the blood. Hey, it's Dr. Brian Adams. I'll see you next time. God bless you, my friend.